My name is Ryan Gander and I am an artist. The work is called Ryan Waiting and obviously Ryan is my name and in the work I wait but I wait for a hundred years. The way that Ryan Waiting works is Ryan, little Ryan, is alive um, and whether there is somebody watching him or not whether it's with a VR headset or the, the halo of monitors that are designed. You could access Ryan Waiting through lots of different channels. This project really reflects our long heritage um, around supporting artistic innovation and collaborating with artists, commissioning artists, often for their first VR works. The medium of VR was quite important because you feel that sense of presence and embodiment in the space. You feel as though you're in that world with Ryan. The avatar consists of an AI brain which is self-writing in real time. So all the decisions that Ryan Waiting makes about what he will do next, they are happening live. Um, and they happen continuously, uninterrupted. Ryan was very precise from the start about the concept and the vision he wanted to achieve. We knew it was going to be quite technically complex, um, so we really wanted to find a technical collaborator, a producer who could um, ask the right questions. Initially the R&D was around a, a few of the tech challenges, but mostly around how can we sustain a hundred years of process that could still feel believably consistently like Ryan. The best solution to that problem of making it recognizably Ryan was that we would motion capture Ryan to get the actual animations. I think we spent about five days doing motion capture to, with cameras filming me so the AI brain could use that data to build me and mimic me. They're very subtle animations, it's not like he's doing some great expressive actions, it's very much waiting, it's body language, it's sighing, it's moving your arms, it's staring off into space, and these are things that an animator can animate, but to have them feel exactly like Ryan, we'd want to motion capture them. Then there was this kind of problem above the problem, which is that it needed to operate for 100 years. That raised some really interesting questions around digital preservation, um, around the conservation and, and stewardship for the work. Obviously in 100, well in 50 years, we don't know what technology will be available. We had to really use kind of fundamental internet infrastructure and build this in a way where like even the way that the screen talks to the brain was built in a way that wasn't like trendy and easy but was fundamental and could conceivably be relied on to work in a hundred years because it's so foundational to the way the internet works. The surprises are the delights when you see that little character actually believably start acting like Ryan. You see the expressions, you see the, the gestures, you see all these ways that the model that you've made comes to life and that was really, um, that was really exciting. So it does look exactly like me. Everything that I do, every mannerism and idiosyncrasy is very like me. I don't know whether me being in this landscape that I've trapped in for a hundred years is a blessing or whether it's purgatory because the work is a version of me, of my essence, waiting for a hundred years in an empty, perimeterless, white landscape. So the context is everything has disappeared apart from me. The world has gone and I'm alone with no one to talk to, no technology, no distraction. And all I am left with is the thing that we are struggling and fighting to retain now, which is our attention.